substitute for victory. Let us never negotiate out of fear. We stand undivided, forever united, fighting hand in hand for the liberty we burn, for glory and honor for our sons and daughters, ever mindful of the lessons we've learned. Let the torch of freedom burn. Welcome to the intersection of faith and politics. This is Wall Builders Live. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Rick Green here with David Barton, and we've got a special guest coming on today. David, Texas tends to lead the way in just about every category, and we certainly have been doing that with regard to taking on the federal government. Yeah, it's interesting. You have the chief law enforcement officer within the executive branch tends to be the attorney general. And we've seen at the federal level what happens when you have an attorney general who doesn't like laws and doesn't like upholding laws. Uh, we've recently seen one of our senators come out with a list of, I think, 87 federal laws that the attorney general and president don't like, and so they ignore or they violate. We've also seen in the state of Pennsylvania as the legislature right now is looking at impeaching their attorney general there because Pennsylvania is one of those states that passed a marriage amendment. A court struck it down, and the attorney general said, well, I'm not going to defend that. I think a marriage amendment's really bad. So he's not willing to uphold the laws that the people themselves pass and enact he wants to make his own opinion into law. And so Texas has been very good about upholding the rule of law. Um, we particularly have been very good about upholding the Constitution. It's been our attorney general that has directly gone after the federal government, sued the federal government more than 30 times for violating the Tenth Amendment, gone after the EPA, gone after everything you can think of. And, and our attorney general looks like will now be our, our governor. But he has won so many of these cases in a row and has started so many and so it's important to have someone who understands and respects the constitutional laws. And in the same way, here in Texas, we passed our constitutional amendment in support of marriage, traditional marriage. Seventy percent of the state supported it. And now we're having mayors in, in different cities in, in Houston and elsewhere saying, well, we're going to create the equivalent of homosexual marriage because we technically can't do it. No, our constitution said you couldn't do homosexual marriage or the equivalent of it. And so it's really important that you have someone, unlike the Pennsylvania uh, attorney general, who's not willing to uphold the laws, that does that. And so here in Texas, really, quite frankly, what happens with our attorney general's race will affect the entire nation because of the type of rulings we're getting in federal courts dealing with Tenth Amendment and, and, and values and traditions, everything else. So this really is a really big race for us here in Texas, but also for the entire nation. Well, when we look at re replacing uh, Attorney General Greg Abbott and having somebody in there that will do these things, we're always looking for a, a true constitutional conservative. And you don't always get a voting record where you can actually measure that candidate to know whether or not they uh, are strong up and down on all the issues. But this year, uh, we do have a guy like that. His name is Ken Paxson. He's a state senator. He also served in the House, and he's been one of our greatest pro-life champions, uh, strong on marriage, strong on the Constitution, strong on free market, all these things. So it's kind of exciting to have somebody like that. And we're excited because we have him with us now on the phone, Ken Paxton, state senator. Thank you for coming on, sir. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Rick. Man, you're in the final two weeks of this thing, so we're thrilled to get a little bit of time with you. I would imagine sleep is not at the top of your list right now, and you're not getting much of it running around the state. It's a big state, and uh, we just appreciate you coming on and telling us a little bit about how important this job is going to be for not only Texas, but for the whole country. Well, you're right about sleep, but we're looking forward to the next week and a half. We're very excited about what we think the outcome is going to be. So, so with a week and a half left... What do you do with your time right now? How do you cover the? You can't cover the whole state, so you know you got to pick and choose. Are, do you guys are y'all having debates right now? Or are you just going to events and speaking? Tell us what your day's like. Uh, you know, it's varied. Sometimes we're we're spending time at uh, you know events where we're meeting people and speaking, and other times we're we're still trying to raise money because Texas is such a large state, and as you mentioned, in a week and a half, you can only get to a few voters. But if you can put yourself on radio or TV, you can get to a lot more voters. Now, in, in your case, you had a, a primary already that was uh, several people in the race, and you took first place by a large margin. You had a, a big lead, and now you go into a runoff. So now it's down to two of you. How are you feeling going into the runoff? Well, we feel great. You know, as you said, we won by 44-33-22. If you take the top 20 Republican counties in the state, we, we were first in 19 of them. We were second in one, which was Travis County, by about 1,500 votes. And we won the home counties, Harris and Dallas, for both of my opponents. So I feel like given that it's uh, probably going to be a lower voter turnout and better educated voters, 
we feel like we've got a really good chance of, of winning this thing uh, by a good margin. Now, there, there's a reason in Texas Republican uh, primary politics uh, that, that you did so well with Republicans and conservatives in Texas. One of those reasons is because virtually every and maybe every conservative leader in the state and from all around the country has gotten behind you on this. I have lost count at the endorsements. I mean, we could rattle them all off, but I know Huckabee and Santorum and a lot of other national leaders are with you, major state conservative leaders uh, that have been in the battle for years. Uh, you can probably remind us of some of these folks, but it seems like the conservative team is on board strong with you. Yeah, I think that's been great. I mean, I think uh, people have paid attention to our records over the last 12 years, and thankfully groups like NRA and Homeschool Coalition and Texas Right to Life and you're right. Virtually every conservative leader and every conservative group in the state has endorsed this. And, you know, so often we get in these primaries and it seems like you have the same rhetoric from everybody running about being conservative and they're all going to fight Obama. But the reality is the, the record doesn't always match the rhetoric. And so I think the reason that so many conservatives have endorsed me is my 12-year record has been conservative and has been consistently conservative. And Rick, if I can jump in there, because you just list some, some folks that have, that have endorsed Ken. And among those, you have, you know, Huckabee and Centaurum. But I'll also point out, you've got folks out of really great justice departments, not the current justice department, but previous administrations. Uh, you have folks out of the justice department who've really come out. Now, why would the federal justice department officials, and I mean really distinguished officials, come out and endorse folks in a Texas race? And again, it's that national perspective that, that what's happening in this race does have consequences for the entire nation because this has been the office that's been taking on the EPA, and that concerns every state. This has been the office that's been taking on the, the Energy Department, trying to shut down energy and drilling in the state, and that's a concern for every state. So this is a, a, a race that you do have consequences in. One of the things I've long told people is, look, whenever you have guys in a race that have a voting record, ignore all the commercials you hear. And that's what you have the case here. I mean, Ken's got a, a voting record that's very easy to check, very easy to look at. And for any constitutional conservative person of faith, it's a, it's a no-brainer. I mean, you, you look at it and say, this is exactly who I want. And, and I was looking and, and just, I was thought, one of the congressmen told me recently a Bible verse I'd forgotten about. And it was Hosea 8.4. And Hosea 8.4, God got on the people of Israel because he specifically said, look, you chose leaders that I didn't approve. You, you went after leaders that didn't hold up the standards that I think are important, and that's certainly not a, a complaint that can be made with Ken. I mean, you, you end up voting with Ken. Again, you got that voting record that shows what his beliefs are, and actions always speak louder than words, and, and that's the good thing. So I think that's significant that you have so many folks from outside the state of Texas that are endorsing in this race because of what it means for the entire nation. It's it's huge, and the position you're going to be in is huge, Ken. Got to take a very quick break. We're going to talk a little bit about what you see as some of those battles that that you may have to take on in terms of a of a of a national uh, you know lawsuit against the the uh, the federal government, or maybe defending something the federal government's coming after Texas for, but that would have an impact on people across the country. State Senator Ken Paxton is, is our guest. Stay with us right here on Wobblers Live. This is David Barton with another moment from America's history. The key to a self-governing nation is self-governing people. And the key to personal self-government is to live by the standards in God's Word. If someone cannot control himself by those standards, then our Constitution certainly will be unable to restrain him. Understanding this, John Adams declared, We have no government armed with power capable of contending with human passions unbridled by morality and religion. Greed, ambition, revenge, or seduction would break the strongest cords of our Constitution as a whale goes through a net. Our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. John Adams believed that successful government rested not upon our great Constitution, but rather upon moral and religious people. For more information on God's hand in American history, contact Wall Builders at 1-800-8-REBUILD. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on Wall Builders Live. Our guest today, State Senator Ken Paxton. 
Candidate for Attorney General in Texas came in first place in the primary by a large margin and has a runoff happening in just the next week and a half. And the reason we're highlighting the, the race is because it has such a huge impact on the whole nation with regard to the battles that Texas chooses to fight against the federal government. Texas has led the way in so many areas. And, uh, and, and Ken, you, you know, you as, as Attorney General would make that decision, right? I mean, you would choose whether or not to go after some of these key issues. So a lot of people can talk about being a conservative. But if it's not your conviction, if it's not something you really believe in, you're not going to take on that battle. So to have somebody like you in that position that will make those decisions is a big deal. I absolutely agree. You know, there are plenty of examples, California, Virginia, the most recent, where you had you had an attorney general that didn't go out and defend the marriage laws of that state. Despite the fact that the voters had, had put it in their, and put it in statute or put it in, in their constitution. And so, yeah, it, it's critical to have... A, f- a conservative framework. If you expect, um, if you expect good results in in, in pursuing these cases, well, and and you know, like David was saying, I mean, these folks at the federal level, at the national level, that were attorney generals in their home states and fought those battles, and then went on to lead justice departments. Guys like Attorney General John Ashcroft. I mean, here's one of the great conservative champions of our day, and even he has stepped into this race and said, "Hey, Ken Paxton is the guy." that Texas wants leading the charge at the Attorney General's office because it's going to impact the rest of the nation in a positive way. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. He typically does not get involved in state races and, and typically didn't get involved in primaries. But I think he, he saw the same thing that you're talking about, which is this is one of the most important positions, not just in the state of Texas, but the entire country. What do you think, you know, if you kind of get your crystal ball out and look at a four-year term for you as Attorney General, uh, obviously, there's going to be issues come up that we could not foresee, and that's why having somebody like you with the right conservative foundation and convictions is so important because you'll respond the right way to an issue we can't even ask you about today. But the ones that you do think will will come up or maybe even working their way up uh, up the chain right now, what do you see as those most important battles? Well, you're right about not knowing because when uh, Craig Abbott started his position, Obama wasn't even elected, and we weren't we weren't suing the federal government on you know on a regular basis. But um, I do see several issues. I mean, we're going to have to defend our, our, our constitutional amendment uh, for defining marriage between a man and a woman. We are ultimately going to have to defend our, our pro-life bill that we passed this, this last session that, that limited abortions after 20 weeks. Um, we're going to have to Which, defend by the our, way, Ken, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but i got to thank you for that because you were one of the key leaders in getting that bill passed. It was not easy. It was a massive battle. For the folks that weren't familiar with it, it went on for months, and uh, you were critical to winning that, and it was the greatest pro-life victory we've had in my lifetime here in Texas. So anyway, but thank you for leading the way on that. It'll be interesting to have you in the AG's office defending the bill that you helped get passed. Well, and that's most of these issues that I'm talking about, whether it's the Constitutional Amendment for Marriage or whether it's pro-life bill or whether it's protecting our voter, voter ID law or whether it's uh, defending our redistricting plan. All of these issues are issues that I was involved in in the legislature. So most of the critical issues that we're going to be dealing with the federal government and fighting with them, I've had a part in passing and crafting in the legislature. So I'm not coming to this job with no background and starting from scratch. I actually, actually know the issues, and I was there when we, we talked about them, and I don't have to guess at what the intent was because I was usually sitting right there um, being a part of, 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 of putting them together. Yeah. You know, we've seen this over and over again. I mean, you can go all the way back to Reagan and the way that, that he was attacked by not only the left, but an awful lot of Republicans went after him as well because they didn't like that he was a good, strong conservative. We've seen it happen with Sarah Palin. Um, as often happens when a strong conservative gets into a top position like this and is leading the way, they go after you in, in a vicious uh, manner and things get twisted and, and, and just, you know, concocted and the media, of course, will jump on it. That's happening to you in these last couple of weeks. And, and David even mentioned, ignore the ads, pay attention to what people actually did with their voting record. But let's address that head on while we've got a chance with you. What about all this negative stuff that your opponent is throwing at you in these last couple of weeks? You know what I'd say is, yeah, I think it's uh, the media obviously doesn't want, want a conservative in this spot or any other major spot in Texas. And so they they definitely uh, have a concerted effort going to to print very negative stories. And my opponent, having finished you know 11 points down and outspending me by three million dollars, I think he also realized his best his best shot he thought was to go very negative and very personal. And so 
not really surprised by either. Um, having never experienced it at this level, in some ways you're, you're a little shocked by it, but it's, uh, it's not anything that we didn't expect. Um, and so we expect it to be like this all the way through, and we expect to, to prevail anyway. So when you're when you're in the thick of it like this, in the last week or two, Ken, what's the best way? I know you're a strong man of faith. Our, our listeners, obviously, people of faith that are excited about candidates like you that they can feel good about going in and and voting for. They want to do more than just vote and contribute. They want to pray for you as well. What's a good way? You know, how would you like them to be praying for you during these last couple of weeks? Yeah, just that God would protect us, that He would defend us uh, against um, untruths and deception, because. That's basically what we've been dealing with, and I, I truly believe we're in a, you know, we're in a, we're in a battle, a spiritual battle, and and that's, I believe in prayer, and I believe that Christians around the state, I know for a fact, that they're praying for me, and, and I certainly appreciate that. So uh, finish uh, finish with a positive for me here, as you've traveled across the state and you're in your first statewide campaign here, and gotten to know so many different people. What gives you hope for the future of our, not only our state but for the country? Well, I know that, you know, David talks about this all the time, about, you know, different points in our history where, you know, we were up against all odds, whether it was the formation of the country and you had, you know, a few great leaders that, that stepped forward and, and led the way, or whether you look at World War II where our military was maybe the 18th or 19th largest military and then, you know, a few few years later we're, doing, we're going through with a, a massive effort at D-Day. I think there's a huge opportunity for Texas because, a small number of people are going to make a decision about the top leadership in the state of Texas because less than 10% of the registered voters are going to vote. And so your listeners have a huge opportunity to influence people, for the most part, who aren't even paying attention and who don't know even who's running. And so their small effort could literally, in my opinion, not just determine the future of Texas, but I believe the entire nation. Man, no doubt about it. And, it. and it is your your vote. It's almost like it's multiplied by 10 in a race like this. And if you grab one friend or family member, now you've multiplied it by 20. Uh, it's a chance to have a huge, huge impact, uh, as you said, not just for the state of Texas, but for the country as well. Ken, we appreciate your example, man. I, I know that it's been an inspiration to a lot of, of activists out there as they've watched your race and, and a lot of uh, conservatives that are just getting in the in the fight, you know, that are running for school board or city council. Uh, you've set a good example for a lot of folks. We appreciate what you're doing and praying for you. Hey, thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. That's State Senator Ken Paxton. We're going to take a quick break. Back in a moment with David Barton right here on Wild Builders Live. This is David Barton with another moment from America's history. Around 1790, the infamous Thomas Paine wrote his Age of Reason, attacking religion and Christianity. Interestingly, one of the strongest defenders against Paine's attack was Benjamin Franklin. In fact, he stiffly rebuked Paine and told him, He that spits in the wind spits in his own face. Do you imagine any good would be done by this attack against religion? Think how great a portion of mankind consists of youth who have need of the motives of religion to restrain them from vice, to support their virtue. I would advise you not to attempt unchaining the tiger, but to burn this piece before it is seen by any other person. If men are so wicked with religion, what would they be if without it? Benjamin Franklin believed that the practice of religion was one of the greatest assets of American society. For more information on God's hand in American history, contact Wall Builders at 1-800-8-REBUILD. We're back. Thanks for staying with us here on Wall Builders Live. Thanks to Ken Paxton for coming on as well. Uh, David, I got to do a, um, you know, moderate a debate with all the statewide candidates in the Republican primary a few months ago, and Ken's not the only one. There's a lot of great candidates running for a lot of the offices, even in his race of attorney general. Uh, just obvious that uh, there's a great farm team in Texas uh, just watching the candidates in that race. So it really does, I hope, you know, not only give us hope, but give our listeners hope that there's a lot of good people running for office. There's a lot of good people in office that do have the right convictions and the right beliefs. So there's, you know, this is not a time to give up just because you see negative negative, you know, things happening in Washington, D.C., or maybe even in your own state. We hope people realize that there's actually a great farm team coming up. There's some good folks that really understand constitutional principles. They understand biblical principles, and they want to do the right thing. Well, one of the things, too, that, and one of the reasons that we highlight, Ken, 
is because so rarely do we think of down ballot racists. And who would think that an attorney general office is a down ballot race? But if I ask most folks right now, name your state attorney general, I'll bet you nine out of ten can't. That's right. And, and that's a very important place because that's what really prosecutes the laws. And I, I don't mean prosecutes in the ways of going after offenders. They're the ones who enforce the laws, who prosecute in the sense of enforce the laws going forward. And so you want your top law enforcement person to be someone who does understand the Constitution, understands the biblical foundations of law in general, that understands how to have the right worldview in going at this stuff. And so we pick Ken as really vicarious for a whole lot of down-ballot positions. And so whatever it is on, on your particular state, I mean, don't get stuck with your U.S. Senator and U.S. Congressman and Governor and, and, and kind of stop there. Every one of these, Every one of these places has huge consequence. And something else that Ken brought out, and that, that's another reason for highlighting him, is he's in a runoff race. Now, primary races are one thing. Primary caucuses where that you, you get out and vote. And usually what happens in those primary races, you have a much reduced voter turnout. And let, let's just put it in perspective. Yeah, the, your highest voter turnout that you have is in a presidential election race. This is not a presidential year. In a presidential election race, what you have is, uh, I hate to say this, you only have one out of three Americans voting in that race. You have 65.1% of Americans are registered to vote out of 100% of adults who can vote. And out of that 65.1%, you have 54% who vote in presidential races. So you're down to one out of three Americans vote in a race, which means that half of that chooses the president, which is one out of six Americans chooses the president, five out of six don't. Well, when you get to this year and this kind of a race, in the general election in November, we will we will see about a 39 percent turnout of registered voters, which puts it down to only 25 percent of adult voters, which means in November the winning side is only going to be around 12 to 13 percent, which means only one out of eight Americans will choose our governors and our senators and our reps, etc. Now you back up to a runoff and you're down into tiny numbers. But you see, in a state like Texas that is a pretty red state or in a state like New York that's a pretty blue state or, or Illinois that's a blue state or Oklahoma that's a red state, races are pretty much over in the primaries. And so it doesn't matter that you have a, a, a big turnout in the general election in November. It's good that you do. But the races are already pretty much determined back in the primaries. So what you're looking at is Texas only had about a 12 to 13 percent turnout in our primaries. And now you've gone from a primary to a runoff. And that runoff, as Ken said, maybe 10 percent, and I doubt that it'll be that high. I think it'll be lower than that. But you're, you're talking about a tiny fraction. So let's say it's it's 9 percent. Well, 9 percent of 65 percent, you're looking at roughly 5.5 percent. And of that, you're going to have uh, half of that choose the, the, the winner. So roughly your next attorney general of the state of Texas, an attorney general that will affect the entire nation through what he prosecutes in the courts, is going to be chosen by about 3% of Texans. Wow. See, that's why it is so important for particularly conservative, constitutional, faith-based people to get out there and vote and vote every stinking time you got an election. I don't care if it's a municipal district or a public utility district. doesn't matter if it's a school board. you got to vote because it takes such a tiny, tiny percentage of people to make a big difference. And when you get somebody good on the ballot, and, and, and you do here, man, it, it just does not take much turnout to make a huge difference in this thing. That's why we choose races like Ken's, because they're good examples for the rest of the nation. A lot of states are in runoffs right now. A lot of states are coming up on primaries in June. Uh, so it's just a good reminder that whatever your state is, pay attention to your down-ballot races, because they have huge consequence for your state, sometimes for the nation, as the Attorney General does in Texas, but be involved in those races. You know, and, uh, David, I, I have to speak a little bit from experience here. The one time I ran statewide for Supreme Court, I was in kind of the same position as Ken. I won the primary, and then I lost the runoff. And in that runoff, I lost by one vote per precinct across Texas. It was about 10,000 votes overall out of a half a million or so, and that was one vote per precinct. So it, if you could just bring one person with you, uh, out of each precinct, you could be the difference maker in a statewide race like well, this. Well, you know, even on that, let's go back to your race, because you ran in the Republican side and you were in a runoff. And there were probably in the vicinity of 7 to 8 million Republican voters in Texas that are known Republican voters. And you're talking about out of 7 to 8 million, you needed 10,000 more. Yep. You know, yep. And, and at that point, that is a that is a tiny, 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 I mean, a half a percent turnout would have caused you to be a landslide winner. Half percent increase in turnout would have been a landslide winner for you. 
So it, it is the thing that if you want good guys to advance, you have to show up every time you get a chance to vote, not just in the primary, but in the runoffs and every every and not every state has a runoff. Some do plurality. But in states like Texas, where a majority is required to win, you will have runoffs. And at that point, you have to show up, and, and it's really important, but it's really important just to show up in primaries anyway. But especially if you're in a majority state where you have a runoff, then show up there as well. Hey, David, what a, you know? How, how about just the fact that so many more people are – uh, you know, frustrated or upset or they complain about the government, they're paying a little bit more attention. Uh, a lot, some people are are getting real involved. But if people are going to get upset, if they're going to pay more attention and then not go vote in this in this things like a runoff right here, they're missing their chance to have yeah. the greatest impact they could have at any point in this whole process. It's almost like slapping yourself down after you pick yourself up. You pick yourself <laughs> up by getting informed and then you refuse to do anything with the information you get. So slap yeah. yourself back down. You can't do that. You got to keep upward upward motion going. So if you're going to spend the time to learn the Constitution, learn about what's going on in the government, to learn about what needs to be changed, then get involved in choosing the guys who will change it and move it in the direction you want to go. And that is such a small investment of time to do that. And across the nation, you have things like, called iVoters Guide, which allows you as I voter Guide to see the people and races, even in runoffs, see where they stand. It's a great voter's guide for any state. It's a great voter guide for Texas as well. So learn the candidates, get involved, and support the good guys. Man, I'm so glad you mentioned that. iVoterGuide.com, great website to check out, and it'll cover your state, and you can go find candidates that uh, meet, you know, share your values that you want to get in office. iVoterGuide.com. Thanks for listening today to Wall Builders Live. We stand undivided.